Hello and welcome to another episode of Rufus Eats Cheese. Today we are looking at the heavyweights. That's right, blue cheese. Okay, first up we have got five lovely blue cheeses here. Uh, I've separated them into two groups. Those of you who know your cheese might know why. Those of you who don't know individual cheeses too well, you're probably thinking, hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one because we are in the presence of aristocracy. This is the great Roquefort, a French cheese that we believe has been made since 1050. So that's, that's a pretty good heritage, isn't it? Um, all the other blue cheeses here have the exact same uh, blue vein mold grown in them. Mold requires air for it to breathe. So the cheeses usually are either spikes or they have um, already plenty of air pockets in them. So with the Roquefort here, as you can possibly see, it's quite a gooey looking cheese. In fact, when I opened it, there was quite a lot of liquid in there, made only from the milk of the Lacon sheep. So this Roquefort cheese was the first cheese to receive the protected designation of origin. It was in 1951, but its protection goes back a long way before that. The caves that it's matured in, where the uh, mold originally comes from, uh, have been protected since the 15th century. In 1666, a law was passed in France that people who were making fake Roquefort, bogus Roquefort, that were not from the area, would be punished. So it sounds a bit like one of those crimes that probably had quite a severe punishment for effectively bootlegging cheese. The, um, the, pr the protection was given, apparently, because... The village of Roquefort, where this is made, is at 630 metres, which is about 2,060 feet. Um, and you can't grow grapevines there. Um, you also can't grow corn or anything else. So sheep and cheese was really their thing. Um, I think this is one of the reasons it received, obviously it's a very fine cheese, but it, one of the reasons it received its uh, protection so early because they couldn't really grow too much else there. Moving on, we have, which I'm sure a lot of you will recognize, uh, a nice English Stilton. Uh, this Stilton is from Long Clawson. It's one of a handful of dairies that are entitled to make Stilton. Uh, Stilton also has a protected designation of origin. Uh, as I mentioned, it has the same um, penicillin rock 40 uh, mold, the uh, mold that grows through the cheese. To provide air for it, the cheese is actually spiked with stainless steel spikes. I believe they would have been copper originally. So yes, this is also a very fine cheese, very lovely. Um, and over here we have the magnificent Gorgonzola. Um, quite hard to manage in terms of uh, moving. If I just try and lift this up, you'll see just how soft that gorgonzola is. There are two kinds of gorgonzola. One of them is uh, a mature or piquant version. Um, and this is the dolce or sweet version, which is my favorite. The exact same mold that's growing in the Roquefort. Gorgonzola is also an extremely old cheese. Um, and also has a protected designation of origin. Over on our other board here, um, this is kind of the VIP club over here. These are our, um, our um, should we say, teen sensations that would really like to be in this club, but don't quite make it yet. So first of all, we have Shropshire Blue. Now, Shropshire Blue is a gorgeous cheese. There is nothing wrong with the cheese itself. There's no... Um, no reason in terms of its uh, taste or anything else that it doesn't qualify, if you like. The reason it's over here is Shropshire Blue is made um, in Shropshire and the surrounding area. 
but it's only recently been that way. Um, Shropshire Blue was originally an attempt by um, a Scottish dairy to copy or to mimic Stilton. This one is also from a Stilton factory, so it's produced in exactly the same place as the Stilton. The Stilton has a huge heritage and a protected designation of origin, and the Shropshire Blue, being a gorgeous cheese, um, does not get this these um, perks, should we say. The last one here is uh, Danish Blue, a particular favorite of mine. Very much like the Roquefort, it's a very soft, very creamy cheese um, with the same blue vein and I rather like it. So we have here our five cheeses. The question is, does the Roquefort really deserve its title of King of Cheese? I think we need to put that to the test really. So I'm going to get in and I'm going to try some. So here we go. Uh, most of our mold is in the middle so I'm going to cut so I'm going to cut through the middle and then I'm going to take a piece off here. Oh, it just, the smell is incredible. It's fairly strong, but it's also really fresh. And I tend to find that with sheep's milk or used milk cheeses. It sounds strange, but you can definitely tell that this cheese has come from an animal. That might sound a bit strange, but it's definitely retained some of that um, some of that animal nature to it. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Gosh, that is incredible. The first hit you get is salt. First thing is salt. And then very, very soon afterwards, you start to get some lactic tones, but they're not the same as the lactic flavors that you get with a cow's milk cheese. You'll also notice it's quite white as well. I believe that's because there's no beta carotene in the uh, milk. beautiful you can still taste the milk which is really interesting um it's also quite fascinating that with as much salt as it tastes is in there the mold still grows so you would think perhaps that it would be a little too salty for the mold to grow um but i don't think that's the case it's beautiful it's very very crumbly if I try and take another piece off here, you can see just how crumbly it is. That's actually fallen apart, even taking it off there. So it is a very crumbly cheese. Mmm. Oh, but beautiful. Fabulous. You can really, you can really taste sheep's milk which is quite unusual. A lot of cheeses become very much um, a product of their own and you don't, get to, you don't get to actually feel that original milk. Moving on with my little carousel here, we're gonna come around to the Gorgonzola, the wonderful Gorgonzola. Um, it actually almost looks like you've poured cream all over it. It does look particularly lovely. Wow, it's so soft. It's so soft and gooey. Now this is not one that is crumbly in any way. If you look there, it's just... very, very, very soft. Beautiful. Right. Let's try 
piece. Mmm. Very different. So, the first flavor you get, the first thing that hits your tongue is a sweetness, and then this beautiful creaminess, almost like clotted cream. And there's quite a delay before you get the, um, the lovely bitter notes of the mold coming through. So, let me try another piece just, just to make sure. Mm. It's fabulous. It's really young and fresh still. It's not an overpowering cheese, but then afterwards you get this wonderful, just a hint from the mold. Um, almost like you've eaten two separate things. So you get the creamy smoothness of the cheese and the mold is like a little punctuation afterwards. Beautiful, really gorgeous cheese. Right, I'm gonna nick this one and we will do the Wheel of Fortune again. Um, I think probably the best thing to do, I'm going to stand our piece of Stilton up and I'm going to take a piece off here. Now I happen to know that Stilton is quite salty. So I have some expectation. Now if you look, this is almost a mixture. You can see the edge has crumbled, it does crumble, but it's also quite moist. So it does move as one piece. It's, it's almost halfway between the, um, the crumb of the Roquefort and the um, gorgeous oozing um, pastiness of the Gorgonzola. But it is, of course, a much drier cheese as well than both of them. So I'm just going to have a quick almond to help clear the flavour of the other two. And we'll dive in. Um. So a much stronger nose. You can smell, you can actually smell the bitterness of the rind. Let's give it a try. Mmm. It's so different from the others. Immediately there's a bitterness from the mould. Uh, but the texture is so different. The texture is completely different from the other two. So, there's also a saltiness and it's definitely something of the farmyard still in there, which I love in a cheese. Mm. beautiful. The Stilton is particularly nice with a cracker or something similar. Um, the Gorgonzola, the Gorgonzola Dolce, um, I particularly like to have as it is just with some wine or something. I rather like that. Um, it's very gooey. It would be perfect to spread on something, but personally, I like to have it as it is. So, Mm. Moving on, moving on to our other board. So I think, I think
think we should taste the Shropshire Blue as it is. Right here. Mm. So similar in consistency to the um, Stilton. Um, it's firm, but it also has a slight pastiness to it. So if you squeeze it with your fingers, it's very easily moved. Mm. A very different creature to the Stilton. Uh, similar texture. So the Shropshire Blue has a very similar consistency and texture to the Stilton, but it doesn't have that initial bitterness that you get with the Stilton. It's also less salty, so if you kind of like Stilton but it's a bit much for you, Shropshire Blue would be an amazing alternative. Um, it also has so much character. The rind is lovely as well. I do find the rind on the Stilton a little tart at times, but the rind on the Shropshire Blue is particularly lovely. Okay, so finally moving to our last cheese, the Danish Blue. Um, this is a very commercial cheese. This is not have the intense heritage of the protected designation cheeses here on the other board, but I do rather like it. I think it's a really nice little cheese. Um, it has the the moistness of the uh, Roquefort, but a little firmer. It's not quite as firm as the Stilton, but it's a little firmer and definitely much firmer than the Gorgonzola. The distribution of the Roquefort mould through the cheese um, is quite thorough. So in that sense, it's, it's a little more like the Roquefort, um, but uh, but it's as if it's been matured longer, which it actually hasn't. A much more sour note to it. Mmm, lovely. That's a lovely cheese. It's slightly... Slightly more resistant in the mouth than the Gorgonzola, but it has a lovely saltiness, a lovely bitterness, a lovely sourness to it. And it's also still reasonably firm. You can still pick it up with the fingers. Mm. It's a fabulous cheese. It is quite a strong flavor, quite intense flavor. Unlike the other cheeses, it does leave a little sting at the back of the throat, which I rather like. Um, but again, if you've got something to put this on, like some crackers or some sourdough or bread or something, this is a fabulous cheese. Okay, I hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, share and uh, comment below if you uh, disagree with anything I've said or I've clearly missed out a blue cheese that you love and know so much about. Pop it in the comments underneath and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down at the bottom there. If there's any cheeses you'd like me to review then please drop them in the comments and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.